spoke to there was a whole message there yeah. I think we need to respond to it Let, let's right now begin to utter words of praise just where you are it doesn't you know it doesn't matter that we all speak at once he can figure it out he's listening to a million churches and a in billions of believers at this moment on Sunday morning. And let's do, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. We give you this service. Oh, God, we worship you. Oh, Lord God. Somebody, don't pray for a need. Somebody right now, maybe it'll be more than one person, but one at a time, I'd like for you just to, in a voice loud enough for us all to hear, offer a word of worship and praise to the Lord. Somebody. Father, we are not worthy. We love you. Someone else. Jesus, you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. You claim upon this whole earth. We praise you. We glorify your name. Father, I thank you that your gospel is worth for the Savior. Ever who saved you, probably already, you chose us because you're all sufficient. You're everything that we need, everything that we face, every challenge. You've already met us. You're looking for people to come to you with whatever burdens they're trying to carry themselves. Father, God, I ask you to help us. Let those go right now. Help us, God. We praise you. You're Almighty God. You came in the flesh and you sent your Holy Spirit as your representative, your comforter, your truth and savior, your indwelling presence to help all of us, and especially this preacher today, God, to speak the truth. We thank you that you are the truth. No questions asked. Nothing else comes close. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Lord. Lord. We believe in your power, we believe in your word, we believe in your healing. We, just to throw a, a little bit of water in the cup, we believe in your word, Psalm 91, we will have, we will be protected against the COVID virus and everything else. We believe in your power, God. No matter what, if you do get sick, we believe. We love you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's all let's all just rise. Let's stand to our feet. Just all together at once. In concert. I, I, we don't have to be in harmony or same same right now. Just everyone lift his neck. God, I just pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, listen to us utter your name. And and honor your name in us and among us in this place this morning. Fill each one with your Holy Spirit. And if any one or several among us needs uh, to make right with God, to be reconciled to you, Father, may this moment, may the next 90 minutes not be wasted on hearts that remain stone, but give us a heart of flesh, Lord, to both listen and heed and then obey your scripture, Lord. Obeying the gospel simply means for us not to be able to perform so well. None of us is perfect, but it means that we need to train our hearts to trust you more, to make us better, so that instead of thinking that we are going to be sinless, we certainly will sin less. Father, help.
helped us through the remainder of this service. And if at any moment your spirit should should want to break into the festivities of what we thought you wanted to do, uh, you are free to do that. And we ask you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. If you'll be seated. anyone else tired of hearing the term global? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, for the past 40 years, we have been hearing about a coming global economy. In 2008, there was a, an economy that we experienced a global, the global economy experienced a global recession. I don't know why, every time they use that word global, it's bad. <laughs> you ever think about that? Yeah. yeah. Um, then, in, over the past year, we have and are continued to experience a global pandemic. We don't even have time to talk about global warming. Uh, or it's just one global disaster after another. The energy crisis is about to go global as well. And they see it, and those who are pulling the strings of decisions that are made globally seem to uh, be moving us like a conveyor belt toward this globalism that no one can really define with China in the lead been there for seven months of my life and believe me we don't want that to happen sometimes it feels like how many people are what are over 50 here this morning? Anybody, anybody over 60 okay then those who are over 60 will remember 1968 yeah yeah for the devil <laughs> I remember things like the fact that in 63, John F. Kennedy had been murdered and shot in the back of the head and how devastating that was. I was in the third or fourth grade and I can remember walking into a classroom and, and finding my fellow students talking about it. Then his brother, Robert Kennedy, was shot while he was campaigning to become the president. Then Martin Luther King Jr. was shot and killed. It seemed like everybody who wanted to do good was being killed. There was, in 1968, it was when the Bunsen burner under the Vietnam War was the highest flame. And there were anti-war and race riots in places like Watts uh, in Los Angeles. And our generation grew up under the threat of nuclear holocaust. We used to practice going out of our classroom, sit in the hall, put our hand between our yeah. knees and kiss it goodbye. Because if, if there was a bomb dra dropped outside, that's what was gonna happen. We would be incinerated. Sometimes a person just wants to go away someplace and live a quiet life. Don't they? Right? Wouldn't, it, wouldn't it be nice if, they, if, if the world would just leave us alone? <laughs> yeah, and we, and we could just love, and we just be free. We just love Jesus, one and all that. Yeah. Well, it wouldn't be nice if we could just go. And when we got to that place, we'd be far away from the long lines at Disney World and crowds at Daytona Beach. And life is hard enough just to make a living. And then we're given all this supposed responsibility that all of us are supposed to carry uh, for race and, and for recycling and saving the planet. Uh, I, it's hard enough to raise our families to do the right thing, let alone take on the challenges of, of overcoming every global threat. And they're always devastatingly bad. We are bombarded with liberal news, with conservative news, and we're told that much of it is fake news, and frankly, 
there are many times when I am just confused. <laughs> Lately, the only source of good news is in this book. Amen. Where we read things like this in Second Peter one, uh, 2 and 3, Peter said, His divine power has given us everything that we need for life and godliness. Now listen, when Peter wrote that letter, he was writing it to the church in Asia Minor, which was being persecuted to death for their testimony of Jesus Christ. He said these words, I'm going to say them again. His divine power has given us everything that we need for life and godliness through his very great and precious promises through which, listen to these two things, through which we may overcome the evil one and participate in the divine nature. The scripture says we can be like, we can be like Jesus. I'm going to believe the scripture, not my last mistake. Then the scripture says we know that in all things in Romans 8, 28, we know we know, we have knowledge of the fact that in all things God works for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. And what, another place we can skip over to Philippians 4.11 and be encouraged to know that we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. And if you're discovering yourself in scripture this morning, and I hope that I, I honestly and sincerely if I could beg you to read the scriptures every day and spend time in prayer, you come across things like this. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Amen. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight, Ephesians 1.3. Then in another place, the scripture says, it was for freedom's sake that Christ has set you free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened with a yoke of slavery. Galatians 5. One. See, there's a lot of people talking about freedom today, but they seem to be driven along by anger and violence and rage and vengeance. Folks, those are motivate. Those are not the fruit of the Spirit. No matter what the cause is or whether or not it seems to be just. Anything that comes from those things is bad. Mm -hmm. and, can, and the end does not justify the means. <sighs> this morning we have one wonderful global solution to every global crisis that may yet come upon us in 2021, 22, or 23. And every great global disaster, along with every knee and every tongue, shall bow and confess that his name is Jesus. He's, I was thinking of that, uh, that snippet that you had. I've heard that before. It never punched me in the stomach like it did this morning. But <laughs> when I wrote things like, he is the Lord of glory. The Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. To Moses, he identified himself in the, from the burning bush as the great I am. You don't even need to know my name. You just need to know that I am. And when Isaiah saw him, he called him wonderful. <laughs> and he called him his counselor, mighty God, the everlasting father and the prince of peace. David, who was his ancestor, You might want to write this down on your outline. Put it on the back or someplace along the margin. And I'll take my time so you have the time to write it. It's not really very long. Two things. Jesus came to rule from within the hearts of men. I'll say it again. Jesus came to rule from within the hearts of men. When you look up, I'll know you're done. Yeah. Yeah, that way you get it later, right? Okay. 
Okay, I'm going to say it one more time and lead into number two. Jesus came to rule from within the hearts of men. A kingdom, write this down, a kingdom without walls that will never end. Amen. Jesus came to rule from within the hearts of men, a kingdom without walls that will never end. And from the text we will read in just a moment, this morning, it is clear that he is not taken by surprise by the events of 2020 or those that lie ahead in 21, in that he has not called us to be afraid of them, to fear, but to be, take action and be tactical and literally take, take upon us the challenge with joy, realizing that, guys, look at me. This is the most wonderful time to be alive. And we have the greatest re number of resources and the greatest opportunity to impact this world for Jesus Christ now than, we, than the church has ever had Amen. in history. And we are about to see something wonderful happen Amen. by the Holy Spirit. Now listen to this. We are not at the mercy of current events or a global conspiracy. Please, you're gonna, when we read this the verse, you'll understand why I'm saying this. We are not at the mercy of current events or of global conspiracy. And I believe that there is a global conspiracy, but we are not at the mercy of it. We depend on the mercy of God. That's right. Now, turn in your Bible to Psalm chapter 2. And most of you know that if you just take your Bible and with your thumbs go right in the middle and open it, it will be in the book of Psalms. And then you just flip back and forth to Psalm number 2. Psalm 2. Second Psalm. Ready? Yeah. It's all about conspiracy. Why do the nations conspire and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed. Now that reference to his anointed is the anointed one, which is the Messiah. You see, this psalm doesn't have a theme outside of the fact that it is a prophecy of Messiah, the coming savior of the world. And so from the outset, with an author that we cannot identify, the scripture says this, why do the, do the nations conspire? Yeah, there's a conspiracy. Scripture recognizes it. There always has been. And the, and the peoples plot in vain. The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against the anointed one, saying, let us break off their chains and throw off their shackles. The anointed one, or the one enthroned in heaven, laughs. Amen. And the Lord scoffs at them, and he rebukes them in his anger and terrifies them in his wrath, saying, I have installed my king on Zion, my Amen. holy hill. Amen. Now the prophet and author of Psalm 2 says, I will proclaim the Lord's dec decree because he said to me today, I have become your father. Ask of me and I will give you the nations as your inheritance and the ends of be your possession. Father, Holy Spirit, who wrote these words as you pushed along the hand of the prophet, make them real to our hearts and lives today in Jesus' name. Amen. When I became a Christian in 1972, my spirit thrived and began to grow in the knowledge that God is not only in control, but that he always has a purpose for everything in its most minute detail. Anything 
anywhere in this world. And if that was true, and I was now one of the redeemed, and I was re could read about it in scripture, this became most profound. When life is spiraling out of control, when your wooden ship is being blown about in the North Atlantic by the winds of storm, or it's at the mercy of the tides and currents in the East Asian Sea, and it appears that because there is no wind, and you need a wind, that you will make become food for the sharks. You need to pray. Amen. Because the one who rode in the boat in the storm and stood up, he said to the wind and waves, peace be still. He's in the boat with us this morning. Amen. Just like he was with Hudson Taylor in 1853. So now we get to the outline that was handed to you when you came in. Here's some things some, that I feel the Lord has laid on my heart to give you this morning for the year that we are facing and for living the Christian life in all ages and living a, a wonderful life. See, it doesn't matter what happens. Nobody can control your attitudes and the spirit of your mind and heart. That's right. That's right. And don't be at the mercy of current events because that is Satan's play, ploy. And if that's what you begin to feel like, Number one, you need to do this. Begin. Number one on your outline. Begin by getting the big picture. Ask. And the nations will be yours. Ephesians 1.18 says this. I pray that the eyes of your heart will be enlightened in order that you may know the hope of to him which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. Listen, that power is the same power as is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead. Amen. If there's a there's a 1980s Christian. Uh, Worship song that says, if that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell in you, dwell in you, he shall quicken your mortal bodies. Quicken means bring to life. <laughs> Listen, guys, be Satan's worst enemy. Make him quake whenever your feet hit the floor in the morning because no matter how bad you feel, you start saying the name of Jesus and you begin to worship and thank God that you are victorious in him and only because of him and Satan better look out. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Second Peter 1.3. I've already said it. We have everything that we need for life and godliness through his very great and precious promises, and for by them we escape the corruption of this world and participate in his divine nature. You see, in the face of every global crisis, we, may he give us a global, international burden for lost people. You understand that that's what he's talking about. When he says, ask of me and I will give you the nations, See, in the Bible, the word nations in the, in the New Testament, it's Greek, it's ethnos. It means ethics. It has nothing to do with flags and governments. It has everything to do with colors of skin, tones, blonde, brown, black. Every continent, every people group and that speaks every nation on the face of the earth. the big picture in prayer and go global. Don't wring your hands. Don't 
be afraid of a fallen economy or a fallen world. It's been fallen since Genesis chapter 3. It hasn't been any better than it is now. Amen. And we've gotten too complacent about the fact that since World War, since the Vietnam War, there hasn't been a draft and everybody gets to be safe unless they want to go fight. <laughs> it has distanced us from the pain. So number two, number one is you need to begin by getting the big picture. Number two, believe that he has one big purpose for your life. Amen. Seek the Lord of the harvest and ask him to send laborers into his harvest field. You know why Jesus told all believers to seek the Lord of the harvest and ask him to send laborers into the harvest field? It's because the one who is doing the asking is the one to whom he is able to give the burden. And if you have the burden, and you'll receive that, he'll supply the power, the wisdom, the authority, and everything you need to be who he needs you to be, do what he wants you to do, no matter where in this global economy. Jesus told us to look at the harvest field because they are ripe. Seek the Lord of the harvest to send forth laborers and raise your hand and be the first to enlist. Begin where you are, among people that you know who are lost and in need of the Lord. Second Corinthians, listen, you got to write this, don't write the verse down, but just the, 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 not the quote, but the verse. Second Corinthians 5.20. Has everything to do with what I'm talking about. Could have preached this whole message out of this one verse. It says this. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. Amen. We implore you on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us. So that in him we might become the righteousness of God. If you are shy, pray for boldness. If you are weak, he will give you power. If you have sinned, repent and be restored. If you lack wisdom, ask God who gives generously without finding fault. If you are afraid, put on the whole armor of God and stand when the evil day comes. And if you're gay, get, pray that God will give you a whole brand new set of desires. Amen. Amen. Find someone, anyone. Go to Walmart. There's plenty of lost people in those aisles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell your best friend and your worst enemy that God loves them and so do you. Start small. Build strong. Begin with someone you know. Pray and ask the Lord of the harvest to soften the hearts of the harvest field. Start local because you never know. Maybe God will call you and make his burden in your heart go global. You might find yourself like me in 1989. Does anybody remember what happened in China in 1989? Not this, huh? Tiananmen Square when the military came in because college students were staging a protest. American style protest, I might add. Peaceful with tanks and machine guns. They slaughtered the people and there is no record of, how, of the thousands. Nobody knows. Chinese people today are not allowed to say, to, to, to mention the events of Tiananmen Square. If they do, <laughs> the first thing that will happen is they'll be brought in a police station. The second thing that might happen is that they might go to prison. Yeah. Uh, in that year, the Lord gave me, I was still planting our first church, and it was our seventh year in the same place, and we were in a new building on 18 and a half acres. And the Lord began after I saw that, I began to have a burden for China. Every
four in the morning, I couldn't yeah. get away from it. I'd go to the office, and I'd be spending my time in the scriptures and in prayer, and I'd go into the altar in the church, and I'd be weeping for the Chinese people, not so that the government would give them democracy, but so that the Holy Spirit would pour out his spirit on Chinese people. I never dreamed that in 2016 he would open the door for my wife and I to have an opportunity for two weeks to go to a city of 15 million in West Central China to meet Chinese and share the gospel back in the spring of 2018 and spend three and a half months working with friends who uh, were laboring over there uh, undercover to build God's kingdom and begin to see. We were there for the first two months. We were there and going to university, student, uh, university campuses twice a week. And for two months, nothing happened. And then at the end of April, somebody got saved. And for six weeks running, there was not. There wasn't one week when at least one person didn't give their life to Christ. And they were Chinese. You know, Jesus said these words. It's not something for even from an apostle or a prophet. He said, if you believe in me, Greater things than these shall ye do. And if for nothing else, I've been given the opportunity. To, Jesus never went to China. And the thing that breaks my heart now is that for now, Still got four, we've still got six years left on our travel visa. Who knows? Maybe the Lord will open that door. Whew. Who knows where your prayer, praying for lost people, might lead you in prayer or in this world? Are you willing? three on your outline. If all this sounds like something that your heart is not willing to do, and that's okay, because <laughs> when we wake up to these things, uh, there will be some resistance from our own humanity. You understand? I'm not judging you. But, but. if that sounds like something that you are likely not to respond to, then number three, reevaluate your big priorities. Offer yourself, enlist in his army. Amen. I'm going to read from Matthew 6, 31. If uh, you want to go there, you can, but I'm going to read it real quickly. It's not necessarily you go there. Jesus, in the Sermon of the Mount, said, Do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows exactly what you need. But first, seek the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. And therefore, do not worry, for tomorrow... For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Yeah. Ask yourself, what are you afraid of losing? And then, on an altar of prayer, give it to God. You cannot lose what you give away. Jim Elliott, before he died on a sandy shore of a river in Ecuador, trying to reach the people who killed him, said, it is no fool who gives what he can never keep to gain what he can never lose. 
don't hold anything back. Get on the roller coaster of faith and enjoy the ride. Number four, overcome fear with faith. Decide that you are going to live victoriously. Decide you are going to believe what the scripture says instead of how you feel. Decide that you're going to believe God instead of the, the, the voice in your heart and mind that says, you're no good, you can't, this, you, no one's listening to you. Nothing's going to happen. Decide you're going to listen to the scriptures and believe what it says instead of the news anchor man or the late night weather man. Romans 8, 1, 2 says, Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. In verse 31, it says, What then shall we say in response to all these things? If God is for us, nothing, no one, can, who can stand against us? Verse 37 says, No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. And in the next verse, he says, For I am persuaded that neither life, nor death, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, or anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, to so... To, the scripture tells us that 10 of us will be able to set 100 to flight and 100 is good against 10,000. In the end, it will be Satan who, and it will be Satan, hell, and death that is defeated. Amen. So number five, define your field of labor. What are you supposed to do? You can't do everything, can't go everywhere. And I'm not saying any of you is going to China. I've been there. I can't go back now. May never be able to go back. And the only contact I'll have with the disciples that we made and, and the people that we love is, thank God for technology sometimes on a limited basis. But I'm able to have video calls in real time with people that we love and encourage them in the faith. Oh, my goodness. What is your part? Well, the first thing is, is that you can go there in prayer because the first, what, the first thing, it's, it's only the second psalm. He said, ask. And they will, the nations will be your inheritance. Ask the Lord to give you a burden. Have it, ask him to make it scare you half to death so you have to depend on him to bring it about even if you're not involved in its finish. Go into all the world. But you can't go everywhere and you can't do everything. Instead of waiting for politicians to make things better, seek God for his mission in your life and live to fulfill his calling, your destiny. Look around and tell someone Jesus is real. There's only one way to come out on the right side of history. Real. Love God and be willing to go anywhere he sends you. And now, for the last three things that will occur, that we'll go through very quickly because they're not difficult, and I'm not going to be so preachy on these, and that is this, the key ingredients for victorious living begin with devotion to the Lord Jesus Christ. A lot of people say they love their church. I tell you what, you fall in love with Jesus. You don't have to worry about loving the church. Amen. Amen. There you go. Number two, faithfulness to your church because it is the body of Christ. Amen. Number three is obedience to his mission in your life. Discover your spiritual gifts and put them to work in ministry here and now. It's probably boot camp for wherever he's taking you. Whatever, whoever he, he's going to have you touch because you are his ambassador. He, hey, hey, he doesn't have anybody else. He can't send someone else.
because nobody else is you. Father, God, this morning I have been to die. I'm afraid to live a fruitless or life. I'm not going to be faultless, but I don't want to live fruitless. There's a whole church here with a future of people who need your fullness. to do business with you. Father, if this church is going to take off on its runway and soar to the heights for which you have designed it, Whether or not you've had been able to or been disciplined enough to keep your daily habits, let's call those to have habits because that's not habits are not discipline. They are they are disciplines, they are not devotion. But they cultivate a devotion to Christ. Those who rest in God them go deeper in prayer and in the word and to be filled with the Holy Spirit and stand to your feet. Yes. Those who want to be included among, you're going to say, God, I don't know what it's going to take. Maybe you already are. But you're going to be faithful to the body of say yes to God. I'm going to pray. pray. When he finally, when he, I'm going to love God, I'm going to be faithful to his church and whatever that he points someplace to somebody who needs Jesus, I'm going to tell him and I'm going to be willing to make mistakes. Stand to your feet. You may be volunteering right now to <laughs> go anywhere and you don't know where that might Father, right now in, in your Holy Spirit, descend upon us. Precious Holy Spirit, fill us with your divine power to be what we could never be, do what we would have never even thought to do. Give us feet to walk on the heights. And even if they are just, in it, especially in the beginning, just the feet of prayer, Pour out your Holy Spirit there. In Jesus' name. Ask of me. And I'll give the nations as an inheritance for you. As an inheritance for you. Ask of me. And I'll give the nations as an for you, ask of me. Lord, here am I. Send me to the nations as an ambassador for you. As an ambassador for you. Here am I. Send me to the nations as an ambassador Now begin to seek him. 
this church when we take our offering we don't reach into our pockets and throw whatever we have at God nothing is done all willy nilly for the kingdom of God we follow his voice we ask the Lord what does generosity look like for you personally so please take the next few moments to pray to your heavenly Ask him, what do I give, Lord? And he gives you an answer, whether it's more than you expected or less than you expected. Obey the word of God. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we get to come together. We thank you that we get to be in your house with your people under your messenger. We thank you, Lord, for the faithful messengers week after week that get up here feed us your word thank you Lord and Father we ask that you would guide our hearts and our minds speak to every heart in this room Lord what does generosity look like speak to your people I believe Father in the name of Jesus Amen. in a few moments these guys will come through with these 